हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू अनदर लेक्चर लेक्चर फोर सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट स्ट्रेस ट्रेन कर्व सो वी आर गोइंग टू सी ए ग्राफ ए कर्व व्हिच इज प्लॉटेड फॉर माइल सी सो लेट्स स्ट्रेस स्ट्रेन कर्व फॉर माइलस्टीन तो दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू तो विथ द हेल्प ऑफ दिस कर्व वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न हाउ द स्ट्रेस एंड स्ट्रेन वेरीज फॉर माइलस्टीन so let me tell you so we are testing the mile c so which is having a thick mile c we are applying a tensile load on this Mile C by the help of UTM, right? So UTM stands for Uniform Universal Testing Machine. So which we can test tensile, we can test compression or shear at one time, right? So this portion at ends are designed. to hold and to fix this specimen in the universal testing machine so now we'll we'll see the graph we'll see the curve then we'll try to understand each and every point which is shown in the curve so on x axis we are taking strain epsilon on y axis we are taking sigma that is stress right so for till the point it will the the line is linear let's say this is point g o so this point this point let's say will give a name so you can give a b c d but uh, let me give this as p this is called proportionality limit we'll discuss after the completion of this graph next it will go like this further this yeah so let's point out so this point i'm giving a name e at this point let's say y1 so e stands for elastic limit the y stands for upper yield point and this is lower yield point so we'll discuss in detail don't worry and this point is the capital u that is ultimate tensile stress ultimate stress point and here let's say b that is breaking point you can give a b c d e f g h but uh, let me be clear that p stands for the proportional limit so till this point till this point hooks law is valid so this part is nothing but the 
the stress is directly proportional to the strain stress is directly proportional to the strain is nothing but hooke's law so hooke's law is valid till proportionality point right the point to which the stress is linear right and proportional to the strain hence we call it as hooke's law let me write here hooke's law is valid right till this point next we have elastic limit this is a maximum stress that may developed in the simple tension so uh, in the in the utm we are applying a tensile load right so this point is called elastic limit like we discussed in earlier classes in earlier videos we know that elastic limit is which if you release a load it will regain its original position that means it will come back to the original position so that point is called elastic point if you remove the load it will entire will be come back to original position right next we have upper rail point so this point is the initiative for dislocation like the material is trying to dislocate trying to uh, deform and but it will not uh, have a particular deformation but it starts to deform what happened here is in the material in the carbon uh, in the mild steel the molecule the carbon molecule will start having dislocation in the body then we have a lower yield point this is a relative to the upper yield point here it will overcome the dislocation right it will overcome the dislocation we call it as upper yield point right so let me write here y1 let's say y2 next we have u that is ultimate yield point so yield stress is defined as so let me try to define this yield stress is defined as in other words as a stress in which the material begins to start deforming that means this is nothing but the plastic limit so till here till here we call it as elastic limit so this region this region we call it as elastic limit till this region upper yield point and lower yield point it call it as plastic limit or it will no more regain its original position it will deform permanently at uh, yield point upper yield point and lower yield point now we have u that is the ultimate stress ultimate tensile stress because we are applying a tensile load that is pull load to the mild steel so here we have a ultimate stress so this point we can calculate the ultimate stress and the last it will break so this point b we call it as breaking point breaking point right so let me write here proportionality limit next we have elastic limit so 
then upper rail point then lower rail point and we have ultimate stress we have ultimate stress here right and breaking point so this is all comes when you apply a load in UTM right so in our strength of material lab we are going to do this so we can plot a graph so that you can obtain all this point so elastic limit plastic limit yield point breaking and ultimate stress you can calculate by using formulas right Let me show you for concrete and cast iron how the graph will be. So it is not in your portion but for your knowledge how if you plot a graph stress strain curve for concrete how it will be. Let's if you apply if, if you apply a tensile load on a concrete block or a cube for concrete it will be not this much for concrete This is for the cast iron. So a lot of variation we can able to see for uh, mile steel. So that's why for engineering point of view, for your our research, for our understanding, we considered mile steel so that you can see number of points, number of uh, different variations in in this curve, right? So what happened uh, when it is failed? When a ductile material fail? How it looks when a brittle material fail how it looks so this is an interesting part so when a let me draw here So when a ductile material ductile shear let's say uh, this is a shear failure so it having a shear failure or you can call it as fracture fracture in any material like, like in this kind of fracture we can able to see in aluminium kind of material so aluminium so for let's see for my scale that is our main concern so it will break let's say this will be the cup There will be some reduction in cross sectional area. This is for mild steel. So, this is ductile mild steel. So, let's say ductile fracture in, you can see this kind of fracture in steel. Okay, in brittle material, it have a sudden 
uh, failure or sudden fracture, it will directly have a fracture. For example, a chalk is a brittle material or a glass will directly break in this kind of uh, fracture we can able to see in brittle brittle fracture right so these are some uh, shapes in reality you can see uh, in a laboratory when we conduct tensile trace by using UTM Now we'll try to understand working stress. What it mean by working stress? Now we'll try to understand working stress. So let's say working stress. What it mean by working stress? So we know that stress is the force upon area. Working stress is nothing but the safe working, safe working stress is nothing but the maximum allowable stress. So, how much a material having the maximum stress uh, stress in that particular material, we call it as working stress. So we can say that safe working stress is known as known as maximum maximum allowable stress. Simple, right? So let me tell you to the better understanding, the stress is always lower than the yield stress so in the previous curve we seen the upper yield point lower yield point right so the stress is always is always lower than the yield stress Right? So, and the ratio, the ratio of working stress to the E stress. The ratio of working stress to the yield stress is known as the factor of safety. So that we'll see in the next definition. So what is the factor of safety? The, the ratio between the working stress and the yield stress. So this is called factor of safety. Let's try to define that. So once we start the numericals, it is very interesting. So let's know about factor of safety. Right? Like I said, the factor of safety is a ratio of ultimate tensile stress to the working stress or a uh, it is a ratio between the yield stress and working stress. It is defined as the ratio of ultimate ultimate tensile stress to the Working stress. So it is defined as the ratio of ultimate stress, that is yield stress, to the working stress. So I can write factor of safety, ultimate stress. 
अपॉन परमिसेबल स्ट्रेस दैट इज वर्किंग स्ट्रेस ओके परमिसेबल हाउ मच द मैक्सिमम द मैक्सिमम परमिसेबल लिमिट ऑफ एनी मेटीरियल वी कॉल इट एज परमिसेबल स्ट्रेस ऑल्सो नोन एज वर्किंग स्ट्रेस राइट नाउ विल सी अ लॉन्ग इटर्नल स्ट्रेन longitudinal strain so if you consider any material if you apply a tensile load it will try to deform it will try to displace in longitudinal direction okay so it will try to deform in longitudinal direction when external force that is p is applied on the material on any bar or rod right so let's say this is my original length l and this is a change in length so this length is nothing but delta l right so for this longitudinal strain i can write as l that is a original length plus the change in length right this will be from here till here right so l plus delta l but what happens like we know strain it will reduce the cross sectional area that means it become thin from the lateral surface longitudinally it can increase the length right that's why we are using plus symbol right original length by the change in length but what happen if you take the length into breadth breadth if you consider the breadth let's say this is a when it changes it will become thin right so this is a actual breadth that is let's say b and this will be the change in the breadth right so this is actual and this is the change in breadth <clears throat> so that is we can take delta b so now if i try to put the values here so it is reducing it is becoming thin that means the original breadth is decreasing so that i can minus the original uh, change in breadth from original so that is b minus delta b i can get it right so this is all about a longitudinal strain so if if you want to define when a body is subjected to the axial loading so this is the axial loading which will act axially and uh axially tensile load okay there there is some deformation in the length the body the ratio of axial deformation to the original deformation that is original length to the body is known as longitudinal strain right the ratio of the ratio of axial deformation axial deformation to its to the original length of any body is known as 
longitudinal strain. Now we'll see the lateral strain. So lateral strain. So it's quite opposite to the longitudinal strain. Uh, let me show you. So this is a material. So right now I'm applying a load. I'm interested to apply load from the lateral surface. That is a compressor load. So what will happen? What will happen to the material? Let me draw separately so that you have a get a good clarity from this. It will compressed, right? Like a pillow. So what happened? There will be laterally change in the shape, right? And it will deform laterally so that is known as a lateral strain so mathematically you can write as a lateral strain is a change in you can call breadth dimensions by can you guess it virginal dimensions right simple so now i can write this that is delta b by b that is change in breadth by original breadth or you can write uh, delta d by d so this is lateral strain. Now the interesting part, Poison has discovered a equation, he investigated on lateral strains and longitudinal strains and he come up with a ratio that we call it as a famous ratio, we call it as Poison's ratio, right? Poison's ratio, very very important. Next time you will get in your external for sure. Let's hope for the best. Right, the poisons ratio. That ratio, it says ratio. So what is the ratio, sir? Yeah, poisons ratio is nothing but the lateral strain to the longitudinal strain. Simple. Now, I can write, directly I can write. If I apply both together, the lateral and the longitudinal strains I will apply tensile longitudinally and I apply compression laterally then I can have an expression I can draw here with another color so longitudinally it will deform like this hope you can get it and laterally it will deform something like this right so i just command the longitudinal strain and lateral strain so that is all about poisonous ratio simple so let me write here this is undergoing tensile so that means tensile stress is applied on longitudinal section. So I write as longitudinal longitudinal strain. Right? So here also same longitudinal 
strain here it is lateral strain here it is lateral strain right let me tell you uh, positive ratio is denoted by mu so i can write as lateral strain by longitudinal strain so don't just try to remember the formulas just try to imagine the concept so that it will be very easy you will enjoy the subject just like you are enjoying the lockdown yeah so now the average values first suppose uh, if i want to calculate this lateral strain i can bring this up lateral strain equals to minus mu that is minus mu into longitudinal strain right yeah let's see some of the values of uh, materials well known materials what is the poisson ratio material and poisson ratio let's start with steel so value is 0.288 we are dealing dealing with steel as a civil engineer right so then concrete most famous the so second largest material used in the world having zero uh, let me write properly sorry for my writing 0.288 0.200 the poisson ratio for concrete is 0.200 that is lateral and longitudinal strain lateral strain by longitudinal strain value right let's see aluminum nowadays we are using for windows right ready made windows that is 0.33 next copper value 0.355 right that's it for today's class uh we'll see relationship between strain stress and strain one dimensional two dimensional and three dimensional then we'll try directly go into the numericals Thanks for watching